May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Blessed or happy are those who approach God with a whole heart, says the psalmist today. What does it mean to seek God with a whole heart? In Hebrew, heart is lev, and it is used to describe very widely the feelings, the will, and even the intellect. The definition says it is the center of anything. What does it mean to approach God with our center? In the Gospel of Matthew today, Jesus begins a dialogue with rabbinic law, with the rhetorical formula, you may have heard X, but I say to you Y. The last two Sundays, we have been following the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew, which teaches many of Jesus' famous sayings. You may remember that it begins with the Beatitudes, the blessings of the poor and the peacemakers, and then Jesus goes on to tell people they are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Then, with this text, Jesus gets into the messy interpersonal relationships, and he is dialoguing with what people would understand as the law, the rabbinic law at that time. And we must remember that Jesus says that he is not replacing the law, but interpreting it for a contemporary first century audience. Jesus reassures people, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. That's what we know as the Hebrew Bible. But he says, I have not come to abolish it, but to fulfill it. And these ancient cultural laws, Jesus actually seems to be tightening up. For example, Jesus says, you have heard it said, do not murder, do not divorce, do not commit adultery, do not swear falsely. But I say to you, reconcile any conflict. Throw away the part of yourself that objectifies others. And don't swear at all. These teachings are all about interpersonal relationships and how we can screw them up. And then how we can recover from our screw-ups. Even though we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth, and blessed most profoundly when we are humble, peaceful, or poor, Jesus knows that we will make mistakes when it comes to relationships. Love is not easy work, but it is the best thing we can do with our lives. Jesus presents this wonderful image that if we are coming to God's altar with a gift, and in our heart we are angry at someone else, we are to leave the gift there and go be reconciled with that person, and only then return to God's altar, having reconciled. Forgiveness can happen in a moment, but true reconciliation is long, hard work, because it means staying in relationship. And there are rare and precious encounters where we actually have the opportunity to be reconciled. Relationships are divine and messy. Right in time for Valentine's Day, lest we get seduced by the idea that love one another is easy business, we have Jesus here to remind us of the difficulty, the art, the dedication it takes to be in relationships. Following this passage comes one of Jesus' most challenging teachings. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your God in heaven. How often do we take the time to really be intentional about relationships? If we are to love one another, how often do we ask people, how can I love you? And how often do we tell people, this is how you can show me love? It is our task to love one another and to love God. And as we see from our passage today, there are so many ways to deny each other's humanity, to break promises, to betray one another, 
but we are still called to love one another again, no matter how many times we stray. We are supposed to be liberal with love. So I want to invite you now to try something with me. Say with me, I love you. I love you. Say it again, I love you. 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 It feels really nice to say that. And I do love you, church. It's really nice to say that and to hear it and think of someone who isn't here. Um, think of someone maybe who is deceased or has moved far away. Take a moment to think of somebody. And say to that memory, I love you. Think of somebody that you have conflict with, someone that has been close to you, maybe has betrayed you. Say to them, if you can, you don't have to. I love you. I'll try it. I love you. Heck, turn to your neighbor. Turn to somebody here. Really, turn to them and say, I love you. I love you. Say it again, turn to somebody else. I love you. This is the work of God. This is the work that we are called to. What are the ways that you give and receive love? Really, how often, this is your charge actually, to go home to think about the ways that you best give love, whether it's cooking a meal, or writing a card, or remembering somebody's birthday. What are the ways that you best express love to people? And often, those are the ways that you best receive love. If you're a deep listener, and that is the way that you receive love, that's probably a way somebody can give you love. I really want you to think about this this week. Think about educating the people in your life. This is how you can love me. This is how you can show up for me. And ask people, how can I show up for you? How can I love you? Do you know the love languages that you have inherited? For example, for me growing up, love was expressed in my family through affirmation and through food. Not sweets, but warm, nourishing meat and potatoes food. So if you give me meat, I will understand that as love. <laughs> Only sort of kidding. And as a pastor, you can show me love by treating me like a pastor, asking for prayer, Sharing with me your faith journey and theological reflections. Letting me in on the little moments of your life. Telling me how I can show up for you, not assuming that I know. One of the love languages of this congregation I've identified is through skits. Do you remember at our uh, mid-year meeting we did a skit to present the Visioning Summit? And there have been all sorts of skits throughout the history of this church that illuminate characters, that illuminate issues, and skits and humor are one of the ways that we connect to one another. What are your love languages? How do you give and receive love? Jesus tells us to love one another. He eventually says, this is the greatest commandment, to love God and to love one another. And the good news here is that Jesus knows that we will disappoint one another and screw it up again and again. And Jesus reassures us that we should always strive to love again. When human love disappoints, which it always will, and when human love glows and wins, which it always will, we have God's love for us, which reminds us that we are whole, which exists at the center of our being, in our heart, calling us to love and love again, and to know that we are love. One more I love you, church. Place your hand on your heart, and imagine the voice of God emerging from within you, saying to you, I love you. Say it to yourself, I love you. God loves each one of us in our entirety. And maybe especially when we are imperfect but striving for love. Know you are loved infinitely beyond your wildest imagination by the greatest force in the world. Let it be so.